Hello friends, welcome to Engineering Panda family. In this video, I'll explain you collector feedback bias of BJD. In my last two videos, I have already covered emitter bias of BJD as well as fixed bias of BJD. If you see those two videos in which I have explained you how we can have operating point of fixed bias of BJD. Operating point means we are delivered to see output current and output voltage. Output current is IC and output voltage is VC for common emitter configuration. So that is what I have explained for fixed bias and for emitter bias. With emitter bias, there were few advantages that even I have explained you regarding stability of operating point. Operating point means output current IC and output voltage VC. Now in this video, I'll explain you collector feedback bias of BJD in which here if you observe output current is IC and output voltage is VC that is operating point and I'll explain you stability of this operating point with respect to different parameters over here in this video regarding collector feedback bias. First of all let me explain you the basic circuit which is there with collector feedback bias. See here from collector with base we are having feedback and this feedback is done with the use of RB resistance right that's why this is collector feedback bias here at base we will be giving input and from collector we will be taking output before you give input we are connecting coupling capacitor C1 and before you take output we are connecting coupling capacitor C2 this coupling capacitors are blocking DC components and it is passing AC components. So here coupling capacitors C1 and C2 that we use it to pass only AC component through the circuit. Here V in will be AC signal. DC component that is getting blocked by C1. So only AC component that will go inside circuit. And here C2 will be blocking DC component. So only AC output that will appear at output side over here, right? Now, let me explain you this operating point Q point in which I'll be deriving equations of IC and VCE. Based on that, I'll be discussing about stability over here. So first of all, if you observe here, we are having node A and at node A entering current is I and leaving current is IB and IC. So let us apply KCL at node A. So if you apply KCL at node A, entering current is I, that is equals to leaving current, that is IB and IC. So I is equals to IB plus IC. Now to have equation of IC and VC, I'll apply KVL at input side and at output side. So first of all, let us apply KVL at input side. You see input side means here we are delivered to apply KVL. So if you apply KVL at input side, then over here you see VCC that is the voltage and in this loop second voltage is VBE. This VBE that is happening from plus to minus. That's why I need to write minus VBE that is equals to C through RC current is I. So RC into I that is the potential drop but I is how much? I is IB plus IC. So I am writing RC into IB plus IC. IB plus IC is I which is current passing through RC. And in this loop another resistance is RB through RB current is IB. So here RB into IB that is how I'm applying KVL in this loop, right? Now, see, we need to convert this in terms of base current. So here IC is how much? IC is beta IB, right? So let us substitute the values. So now we can have equation of base current. So if you take this things common, then IB will be VCC minus VB divided by RB 
plus here we have RC resistance into 1 plus beta. So that is how we can have base current equation, right? This is very essential equation. See from base current, one can have output current IC. You see how. See one should know IC is what? IC is beta into IB. So if you have IB, multiply common emitter current gain, you will be having IC, right? So this is how we can have output current equation. Now let us derive output voltage equation. So for that, let me apply KVL at output side. So here we are having output. So I'm going to apply KVL at output side over here. So here, if you observe at output, voltage is VCC, right? So VCC and in this loop, another voltage is VCE that is happening from plus to minus. So minus VCE that I need to write. That is equals to here in this loop, only one resistor is there that is RC and through which current is I. So potential drop is RC into I where I is how much? IB plus IC, right? So that is how we can have output equation, right? Now from this equation, we can have VCE. So VCE will be how much? VCE will be VCC minus RC into IB plus IC. See that is how we can have output equation, right? So now I have explained you output voltage equation and output current equation, right? Now based on that, we need to understand stability of operating point. The reason is operating point is Q point where output current is IC and output voltage is VC. So that explains you stability of circuit, right? So here, see because of RB, there are few advantages. See first advantage is it provides stability against variation in temperature. I'll explain you how it provides. First of all, you need to understand it provides stability against variation in temperature. It also provides stability against variation in VCC as well as it provides stability against variation in beta. See usually what happens? Usually if you increase temperature, then it will be increasing collector current. But here because of RB, increase in temperature will not result higher increase in collector current. If you observe here equation, right? Then see based on this equation, you can say that IC that is beta into IB where bit IB is this much, right? So if you increase temperature over here, then in total IC that should increase. Why the reason is if you increase temperature, then value of beta may increase. But here value of collector current that is independent of beta. Let me explain you how. See here, this is the equation that I am repeating again over here. Let me write it first. See, this is the equation which I have already derived, right? Now, see with this equation, first of all, one should know value of beta that is there in terms of 50, 100, 150, right? So here easily you can say 1 plus beta that is almost equivalent to beta. Right. Now here, see if you keep value of beta into RC very greater than RB, then denominator will be having value which is beta into RC only, right? See if you keep beta into RC very very greater compared to RB, then you can say beta RC that will be equivalent value of denominator, right? So here this beta will get cancelled. So current IC that will be VCC minus VB divided by RC. So this IC is independent of beta that one can say. So here if you increase temperature, right, then also IC is independent of beta means it will be having higher stability. Even it provides stability against variation in beta. The reason is output current that is not that much dependent on beta as per this conditions, right? So remember these conditions should be followed over here. It cannot be like beta is equals to 5 
then you are saying like 1 plus beta is equals to beta. That is not true. Beta should be 100. In that case, you can say 1 plus beta is equals to almost beta, right? As well as beta into RC, that should be very greater than RB, right? That is the condition that must get followed over here. But because of this condition, there is one disadvantage. Let me explain that disadvantage over here. See, beta RC, that should be very greater compared to RB, right? So if you wanted to have this condition, then there are two ways by which you can have this condition. See, first is you should be having RC which is higher, right? So if you have higher value of RC, what will happen? It will be resulting into need of higher VCC. It will be resulting into need of higher VCC. If you increase value of VCC, then automatically cost will increase, right? Cost will increase. Why? The reason is, see here in circuit, VCC is supply, biasing supply. So if you wanted to have value of RC to be high, then you will have to increase supply voltage VCC. That is one way by which you can have this condition, right? Second condition is what you see. Second is, if you wanted to have this equation true, then you can have it by having RB to be lower. If RB is lower, see, if RB is lower, if this RB is lower, then here we have collector base junction. So collector base junction voltage will become less. Means collector base junction that will come in forward bias with lower voltage. Why? The reason is with collector base, we are applying RB to be lower. If you connect parallel resistance with lower value, then collector base junction that will be considered as forward bias, right? So you will be having, so you will be having forward bias voltage, you will be having collector base junction with lower resistance that you can say right so that is what the issue which will happen if you keep rc to be higher or rb to be lower right so here we need to understand this and based on that we need to design circuit i hope you have understood those things how conditions are there so here collector feedback bias that is better compared to a fixed bias circuit which we have seen it with this video you just go through it Definitely it is better than this, but still there are few issues which is there in terms of cost of circuit, which I have explained in this video itself, right? If you wanted to share anything, please note it down in comment section. I'll be happy to help you. Thank you so much for watching this video.